these two sessions were a prime example of all your prep work being pushed aside to parts you might not quite have been ready for. And it's also a good example of why you make sure you prep like one or two sessions, or at least you know ahead of time what you're going to do. Session nine was supposed to be the big, huge boss battle between the Knolls and Sinrath and Freyloom and my party. Wow, right? That's it was supposed to be a great big battle in the shrine. They were supposed to fight with the you know heads of, of Tiamat looking down upon them. It was going to be awesome. And then a wall of thorns goes up and cuts off all my bad guys. Okay, so. That's not happening. The, they try to attack it because that's what the gnolls I figured would have done. They're not getting through it. Now, I don't know if the party realizes, but there was a back way. There was an entire room that the party never even described. And I'm saying this now because the party has left the, the, the caravan and you're not allowed to use this information for meta to go back and research it. You're moving on to the next city because that's what you guys are doing next. You've already said so. But there's a whole other room they missed with secret tunnels that go from the back of the shrine up and out. So when they didn't get through it, Froelum was like, oh, pfft. Up the chute we go. Uh, and as they're going up, though, they attached a rope to the trap to the acid. Because that's what I would do. So as they're going up the chute and they're leaving, they basically waited till they were all up and out of the way. And then they yanked the treasure box, which was tr the trigger for the trap, so that the acid would splash on the party. And that's exactly what happened. Unfortunately, the trap was not very successful. Almost all of them dodged the heck out of it. Uh, Bless had been sprayed all over everybody by the paladin, so everybody made their saves, and then everybody proceeded to make the saves against inhaling the acid as it splashed around and became a mist, except for poor little Cobalt Eddie, who is half the level of everybody else. He starts coughing up some blood, he took some damage, but on the most part he was fine. They then move on and are going into the dragon hatchery part with the actual eggs. Now, luckily, I had actually drawn out not knowing which way my party was going to go when they first entered the hatchery and the fact that they could go one way and go all the way down to the bottom or they could go this way and go all the way down to the bottom. I'd actually already drawn out all of the backside of it and was just waiting for them to get there. So luckily, I had the dragon hatchery all sketched out on my map, so I was just able to like shift everything over as they proceeded to go further down and into the actual hatchery part and where they then met up with the, the 12 or 15 kobolds or whatever I threw at them at the back end. Um, there's a big change. Originally, the hatchery was supposed to be guarded by a roper, and uh, some guard drakes. I didn't like that. It's a hatchery. These are important eggs, right? I can maybe see the guard drakes, but the guard drakes aren't going to be a tending, nurturing kind of creature. And, and neither is the roper. I mean, the roper was there. I don't understand the roper, actually. I will throw that out there. Cool. It was an intelligent roper. But it... Other than it being a cavern, that maybe they found the roper in there and like then coerced it into... Helping protect... It made no sense to me. It made more sense that you would have recruited and trained some of the kobolds to act as nursemaids to the eggs. That's what makes sense to me. So, hence the large amount of kobolds. However, the kobolds, they're not dumb. They're just not... They're just not intelligent. There's a big difference, okay? The way that I so pictured it is that the kobolds, hearing the party come in, hearing the splash of acid, and knowing that they just basically walked in, saw Sinrath, and then somehow walked right past him, as well as having gotten past all the other kobolds in the barracks and anything else that they had found, these kobolds, being trained as nursemaids, knowing that the party just walked right into, their, into the hatchery, are hiding, hoping that they don't find the eggs, because they, are, they know they're going to die. They know it. The party just walked right past their bosses. So, they were hiding until they touched the eggs. Because they knew that if they touched the eggs, Sinrath would kill them. End of story. That's their charge. They were in charge of the eggs. They cared for the eggs. They wanted the eggs to survive. So, when the party started manipulating and playing around with the eggs, they came out of the fog. They attacked the party. That was the trigger. That's what started that whole lot. That made a lot more sense to me. There's my first big change to this. Uh, the other big change, if you go back, actually, you know, I was going to mention this more when they actually got into the fight, was the gnolls. The gnolls are supposed to be berserkers if you go by the book. And I can understand maybe having the berserkers as be like they were cultists who were like fanatical cultists or something, or they were the badasses of the cultists. I mean, having human berserkers, cool. The barbarians, basically, is what they were. But I felt throwing a different critter in there. First off, I already have a bunch of gnolls, because I like gnolls. So I already have a bunch of the miniatures. And so I figured 
throwing them in here is a good point for them to be introduced for use possibly later on down the line as some of the other bad guys to replace some other things that I don't have. So yes, I am looking forward. I have read the story, the, the, the book, four times now. I know how the storyline's supposed to go, more or less. There's some minor minutia details that I'm probably glossing over or forgetting, but for the most part, I know how I want this to go. I've gone over it, I've read it a couple of times, and i figured out where I want to make changes. So the Knowles being here is foreshadowing. I can't actually say that without actually like giving it away. I have to say it to, to tell you why I put the Knowles there as from the DM standpoint, and I am foreshadowing. The Knowles are going to come up later. I really don't care. My party's going to know it. They're, but by the time they get to them, hopefully they're going to forget this video happened. So you know it now. You're watching these in order. When I mention Knowles later, you'll know that they first showed up here. This was foreshadowing. They were meeting with Sinrath and Froilum because they're going to show up later. Foreshadowing. Like Sinrath showing up in Chapter 1 and now being in Chapter 3 and concluding that kind of mini nemesis that they built up, which again, I thought was awesome. Uh, the other change I did, I did throw, I, because I found a model that actually had two axes, is why I changed Sinrath to having battle axes versus, I think, like the spears and stuff he was supposed to have. Whatever. I also, I gave, uh, for a little I left, I keep the halberd and stuff. It's a wizard. I did find a nice model for her and stuff in the pictures. So it still was kind of cool. Awesome. It worked. Those are the really big changes that I've made. Oh, wait. There's more. The initial book simply said that the, the eggs were, like, haphazardly stored in this hatchery. But yet, they also mentioned that they were trying to hatch them. So I went down and I did some digging. And this just literally was me digging through some old wiki pages from Forgotten Realms and just digging around into chromatic dragons and some of their background and some of maybe, you know, Unearthed Arcana or, or even homebrew stuff, but people's reactions about dragons. I, I really do feel that every dragon have a different environment for their eggs to grow in based upon their own natural environment. So... Black dragons are going to hatch an acid. Um, so it makes sense that they would have the acid. They already mentioned the acid earlier. It was used in the in the shrine as a trap. So they've got acid. So why not use that for a bit more flair, a bit more flavor? So these black eggs. By the way, there was a third one they missed. <gasps> anyway, so two black eggs floating in these pits that were dug out that are filled with acid to incubate the black dragon. Blue dragons, desert. Blue dragons are from, you know, love to make their caverns in desert and dig into the sand. So it makes sense that they would then incubate their eggs in sand. And I made it magical sand. It was warm to the touch. Not, not giving off light, but giving off heat. Um, and so they buried it and they enchanted the sand to make sure it actually gave off heat to incubate the blue dragon egg. Blue dragon egg. I'm hoping you're making the connection. Good. So... Of course, black dragons in acid, eh, they could have tried to find a way to get in, get them out. I mean, there's probably ways they could have made some contraption of metal to pincher them. Maybe they're, I mean, come on, the kobolds were, were tending them. They had to have a way to get the acid out. But I, I forgo. They dig out the blue egg um, and they carry off the blue egg. Foreshadow. The actual combat itself, I really, other than the fact that it's four gnolls, uh, and actually I will say right now, since they've already beaten them, it was two pack leader gnolls and two regular gnolls, and then my elevated, like, CR6 uh, Sinrath, and then I left Freyloom exactly where she was. In retrospect, I probably should have bumped Freyloom up a little bit, made her a little more powerful, but she was doing really well. She actually was a pretty powerful magic user. And Lu Tao rolled really well. He fought off two hold person spells. He made two saves, almost back to back, to stop hold person. If either one of those had taken effect, Berlum would have escaped. But he 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 rolled really well. I you can't fault him for that, uh, you know. And went through, she went through her level two and level three slots. <laughs> Done. Um, the mass heal wounds took up a level three. Uh, the other one was and so it, it was it was totally legit. Okay, it happened the way it was supposed to happen, and and. I mean, she was a CR2, which is what? You're supposed to put one of them against four level twos. So, I mean, the fact that it was, she was a CR2 versus as part of a group that was made up of CR2s and CR1s and a CR6 by themselves, that was fine. They, they did perfectly well. Sinrath, 
I totally blanked on the breath weapon. That's my bad. I should have totally opened Salvo with the breath weapon when it first started. Like the party was grouped up perfectly nice. I could have hit most of the party with the lightning. Totally blanked on it. That's my bad. So I, I feel bad I didn't let Sinrath use the lightning. It might have changed things. Eh, it might not have. Who knows? Uh, all really good combat though. Uh, Eddie was both spectacular and failed miserably. Uh, just, you know, I have actually created a character for Eddie now. Eddie has a class. Eddie has a, is obviously a cobalt. Eddie used his, you know, racial ability during this in Coward to give everybody um, a bonus, which I don't think everybody was expecting, but it kind of got a good laugh out of people, so it was totally worth it. Uh, he's half a level, though. I started off level two. I figured it would be a decent level. If you think of, like, level one would have been when he started with the group, and he would have gained at least a little bit of experience and come up a little bit. So he's a level two um, until the end of this. Eddie leveled. But I'm going to keep Eddie's class a secret until the party figures it out. I've given them some hints. We'll see if they figure it out. Uh, other than that, really uh, upping the things. Like I said, the book said the berserkers should have been, you should have an additional berserker for every, like, two party members. So that's why there was four of them. Is because, Or for every every other party member over four, you should add in a berserker. That's why there was four gnolls in there. Because I have eight characters. Uh, seven players and Eddie. So... It's been a, it was a lot of fun, though. This was a great, huge combat. I mean, the actual combat at the end of the tunnel did take almost the entire night, and then we kind of quickly ran to Green Nest just to get them out of the tunnel and close that chapter up for everybody. Um, there's a little bit of leeway. I mean, they did show up with a dragon egg. There's going to be some questions asked in the morning about that. Uh, we're going to see exactly where the dragon egg ends up um, and what they decide to do with it. Are they going to take it with them? Are they going to leave it in um, the governor's care in Green Nest? I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Now they head north with Leotian to the to their first city, larger city, I should say, than the little town of Green Nest. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how things play out with the information that they've gathered, uh, the information talked out between the two of them. There's going to be a, a good information exchange between the NPC and the players in the beginning of the next chapter as they kind of formulate what the next steps are going to be. Um, it's going to be kind of cool. I really do think it's going to be fun. I do hope you stick around. So, if you enjoyed this, I would say hit my subscribe button, hit the bell button. I do post about once a week. However, there are going to be times when I post less than that, depending on whether or not, A, we don't meet, or B, I have, uh, you know, the sessions are short enough that I can compress everything into two videos, because big fight sequences, while they sound really cool and they're a lot of fun to do, story-wise, you can wrap it up in, like, ten minutes. Uh, I will hopefully actually do some other videos. My family is coming in for the holidays, as you can tell. It's holidays here. We just sit in December. Uh, once my family gets here, I'm actually hoping to maybe recant some stories with them of uh, Haven, the friendly ghost, and all that kind of stuff. So do look for some of those where I'll hopefully be sharing some of my experiences growing up playing D for most of my life. Uh, if you would like to help me support my channel, I sell my dice pouches at my Etsy store and a card game I created called 5 Minute Sword Fight. I will never monetize this channel because I hate commercials. So, with that, I've been Haven the Hare. Thank you so much for watching How Haven Did It for chapter, the end of chapter 3, basically. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, do make comments. Shoot me an email. My email is down below. It's haventhehare at gmail.com. Yeah. Uh, I love talking about this stuff. I love uh, discussing it. You can also find me on Reddit under Haven SOB or, or find me in any of the groups on Facebook, which I think I left some doodly do some links down below of all the fit of the book. Sorry. I've also linked some of the groups and chats from Facebook that also helped me out with designing this and how I decided to go about this. You can find me there and chat with me there as well. With that, I will bid you a fond farewell and may you make all of life saving throws.